Hey, I'm my now Jackie Jack. Hey, 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 hey. Fire, 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 holy ghost is fire. Fire, fire, just bring your holy spirit fire. Fire, 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 holy ghost is fire. Fire, fire, just bring your. Hi guys, welcome. Oh, I'm missing a nail. This is ghetto, but we still finna record. Thank you guys so much for coming back to my channel or watching my new vlog. Today I am going to do a get ready with me while I tell you a few facts about myself. My friend reminded me, she was like, you're making all these vlogs, but have you told these people who you are? And I said, no, I did not. You know, so we're just going to go jump right into it. I already put um, the Born This Way concealer on my face and the Black Opal concealer. This is not going to be like a makeup video or like, you know, because like I said, I'm not a makeup artist. I just pre-style. So while I'm doing my makeup, I will tell a few facts about myself. So yeah, enjoy. So I live in a town or a city called Diman. It is very small, very tiny. Um, and I was born in Amsterdam. I am 28 years old. Oh, when I say it, it's just like, wait, am I gonna do my eyebrows first? Yeah. When I say 28, I'm just like, wow, for sure. Yeah, now, girl, well, not old, but like, I feel like I'm really, really entering a new season of my life. And it's kind of scary, but kind of exciting as well. Um, yesterday, a huge testimony happened. Oh, I, I called my sister. I called my best friends. I was just like, God, this is crazy. My um, nickname right now is Opringa, because me pre. Like, sometimes I say let go and let go, but I ain't letting go and I ain't letting go. I just be stressing out. Like, oh, it's just too much. Like, I feel like I need to be dramatic before I really, you know, go seek for the solution that's just me but i really need to repent from it my birthday is on the 22nd of january um i am Ghanaian. my parents are ashanti so i speak tree i speak tree like people say brothelized i wanted to do this video in tree i wanted to do like a get ready with me in tree but y'all okay let's try it so say say me the eyebrow glue added to my eyebrows also i'm maniacos for that Ooh, child. Okay. My eyebrow and we know to me we said are very thin, very thin, in it. So me yeah, me used to wear a man yeah yeah thick account. Me yeah eyebrow glue no I'm not wearing. Me yeah eyebrow glue no I not. Me the how can I say? Boy, eyebrow pencil ah. Feeling it in. I don't know what that's in tree. Y'all can figure it out. And then my personal makeup here very um subtle. Nipa Becca said the media to me no so that I don't know. I don't so no more. But that's you and I am me. Period. Mwah, no worries. So me here we know I'm not me the way no it's this too heavy. Me here my eyebrows now me for concealer way I to me. No, this is not mini echi. Mini echi is my my eyelashes. You know what? We're just going to do the English. So we're just going to do my eyebrows in English, okay? Because I ain't got time for y'all to be laughing at me in the comments. Y'all be bullying me in the comments about my tree. Listen, I understand it like fluently. Well, not in songs though. When they be singing in bad fasting songs, I just... I don't know. Um, I also went to school in Diman. And I went to um, high school in the Rijkersbos. In Amsterdam Southeast and when I was done I went to Erose so I studied um, fashion and uh, styling so fashion designing and styling I did that for four years got my degree and when I was done I had a gap year so in that gap year I just I was working at a supermarket I was working at a collection agency and I was working as a steward in um, Johan Cruyff Arena like during the football games and stuff so I had bare jobs like listen I was grinding bro I was grinding so after I was done with that study, um, I went to Amfi, that's the Amsterdam Fashion Institute. That's where I got my degree for fashion and business development. And I've always been in fashion. Like fashion has always been my passion. I really never had a, well, I wouldn't say I didn't have passion for something else. I liked interior designing a lot, but I never really took it that seriously. I'm also a graphic designer. So I have a business called PAP Design. I started the business in 2019. Uh, so I make logos, flyers, banners, name it, cartoon logos, every single thing. And I thought that myself through YouTube and just, yeah, just 
trying it out. So I have one older sister. Her name is Harriet. That's my G. That's my doll. Like, listen, I would die for this girl. I would go to jail. I would be somebody yay for her. That's 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 on period. Like this girl has been standing in the gap for me so many times. Like mentally, spiritually, physically, financially, like whenever I need her. She is the one that paid for my first photo shoot when I was 14 years old. And she was 18 and she paid like 200 or something. And yeah, she has always been my like my main supporter, honestly. Like she set the bar high for these mandems that are coming. Because the way that she spoils me, my parents spoil me as well. But my sister, Harriet, nah. And she lives in the UK. And I used to live in the UK as well for my studies. That's where I met like, you know, my church family carers and stuff. Like I told you my testimony story. We were very, very close. We used to fight a lot when we were younger. Like we used to like boop, boop, like fists and stuff. Like she was very aggressive. The moment she moved out, I feel like our relationship got way closer. We are literally like two peas in a pod. Two peas in a doggone pod. I had my first relationship when I was, I think I was 18. Almost turning 19, yeah. And oh God. That knee, let me not say that word. That guy, whoo, that was so, that was my first encounter with a narcissist. First encounter, like, this guy was so toxic. He put me in a depression. He was, oh, the worst that could ever happen to me. Listen, the worst. But I um, learned so much about myself through that relationship. This guy was so toxic. Like I told in my testimony, I did not know my identity. Everybody could mold me the way that they wanted to mold me. So, he changed the way that I dressed, he changed the way that I did my hair. When I had like weave in, I couldn't brush my hair in his room because he didn't like fake hair. He only liked girls with that, that would wear their natural hair. But at that time I had alopecia because I was, so I was very insecure about my natural hair. So I was wearing like weave and stuff. I couldn't wear certain shoes. Like he was so controlling. Oh my God, it was crazy. My last relationship was a good relationship. The guy was very good to me, honestly. A very, very good guy. And, um... That really showed me that, you know, there are, there are good men out there. Like, they're not all the same, you know. Beforehand, I was like, oh, men are trash, men are this, men are that, blah, 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 you know. But he really showed me that, no, there are good men out there. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. But, you know, he changed my perspective. Ooh, that's a bit too sharp. How I did my eyebrows. But anyways, he changed my perspective on how, how men can treat women. And obviously, my dad has showed that as well, but... To a certain degree, you know, he's still very traditional. But, um, yeah, that relationship kind of changed my perspective on men. And I was like, you know what? It, and obviously, we were both in Christ. So he was born again Christian as well. That may, may be also... No, that doesn't change anything. Because there are guys who are born again Christians and still treat ladies as trash. So let me not say that. I love traveling. Like, if I could have a job that would make me travel 24-7, I would be the luckiest girl on the earth. Sorry, this is my sound. My God. The way I love this song. Ah. Okay, so what was I saying? I love traveling. And I asked the Holy Spirit, am I traveling because, you know, I'm running away from something? Or am I traveling because it's actually healing me? And he was like, it's like half and half. You're actually running away from certain things that you don't want to deal with. Because every single time I had the urge to leave, something happened. You know, like there was something going on in my life. And he was like, girl, that's not what we're about to do. You're going to face your demons. But whenever I would travel, I would also heal a part of me that was broken. So it was like half and half. So I was like, okay, the next time I travel, I don't want it to be half, half. I want to deal with the issues that I leave behind. And when I go, I want to also come back relaxed and not come back to issues that I left. You know, so I think it's really because of my parents. They really indulged that in me. They really... You know, put that in the, on the inside of me. We used to travel so much when we were young. We would go to Italy, we would go to Germany, we would go to Belgium, Ghana. Every two years, we would go to Ghana. Like they really, they would go to, they would take us to like museums in Italy. We would go picnicking outside. We would go to Efteling. Like my parents, shout out to them. They weren't really like the traditional Ghanaian parents that wouldn't do nothing. Like we would literally go outside and do stuff that the white people would do. We would take the car, my mom would like put everything in, so in a picnic basket and we would just picnic when it was warm outside. Like my parents, oh, God bless them. Honestly, they gave me a really good childhood. Obviously I had traumas as well, but they were not the ones to blame for those traumas. They really made my life, you know, 
better. I am obsessed, obsessed with cheese and fries. <laughs> Listen, whenever I go to a restaurant and there are cheese on the menu, like loaded fries, I need to find myself not to get it because childish girl try new dishes like what's your problem i love chicken like i can eat chicken every day that's such a black thing to say but anyways cheese fries chicken yeah yeah god know what he did that's just so delicious i love it but i'm also somebody i love to try new cuisines like i love um going to new re restaurants trying new foods of different cultures you know but there's one culture i don't like the food i'm not gonna mention it but anyways <laughs> Anyways, that's really my love language. Feed me. Do you get it? Like, and people always ask me, well, guys that I would like date with or like I would talk to, that's me like, what's your love language? All of them. All of them. Like, I ain't picking. I ain't choosing. Like, give me everything. Like, what you mean? I'm a daughter of the most high. Why are you picking like only two to, to treat me with? Boy, I don't have like one specific love language. But I would say words of affirmation is way more important to me than physical touch. I'm not that touchy touchy person. You know, like if you all up on me all the time, ugh. Oh, Nigga, let me breathe, bruh. When I was younger, I always wanted to be a police agent to make sure that certain people will go to jail. I'm not mentioning any names, but that was really the very main reason why I wanted to be a police agent. I said, y'all gonna get locked up. Y'all some wicked people. Like, y'all should not deserve to be out there. And I said, listen, the trauma y'all put me through, y'all need to get locked up. I don't care. Not a fact about me, I'm a huge dreamer. Like... Whatever I dream actually happens and sometimes I dream like I don't know if those are dreams or like visions. I don't know There were days where I would take naps and then I would see like one of my friends crying on the floor in her room And I would call her like a few minutes after when I woke up It's just like that, that literally just happened an hour ago So sometimes I'll be dreaming stuff and I'm just like God what is all of this and I used to have the when I was very very young I used to see like a lot of things when I was younger as well in Ghana That's why I don't like going to Ghana. Ghana is so traumatizing to me And it just keeps on getting more traumatizing Ugh, if you know you know a lot of people enjoy going to Ghana But for me hey Ghana is <laughs> Y'all better say prayed up when y'all go there. I'm not even lying. That's my country. I know but That country is very traumatizing to me. I see a lot of things in my dreams when my friends are going through stuff I see it in my dreams and I'll be calling them and be like are you good cuz I saw you crying. Why did you cry? Who do I need to beat up and I'm a huge girls girl. That's another fact like when you're my friend when I call you my best friend listen Nobody should come for you. Nobody should try you when I love I love hard. I don't love like half you know when i say i'm there for you i am there for you but i'm also very easy in cutting people off and that's i don't think that's a bad thing sometimes well i've been reviewed by all this word about it that i was like a bit too harsh to people in cutting them off but then when i look back at it yeah i was wrong let me just not let me just take a rebuke yeah sometimes i can be very harsh in cutting people off because why are you being fake like it's free to be real it's free to not be fake like what's your problem why would you stab me in the back are you dumb no i'm really easy in cutting people off but i've been more i would say i communicated more now back in the day i would just delete you block you ignore you but now if i want the friendship to end i'm gonna let you know i will let you know that you've been a bad friend i will let you know that for me we can be cordial i still love you with the love of god but that's that's just it on a later stage of my life i found out that i had pcos that is post i don't know how to pronounce it. it's an ovarian syndrome i don't know what the how to pronounce the p of pcos but it's basically a syndrome that comes with a lot of symptoms that has to do with your ovaries so my menstruation cycles are very very painful um i faint during my menstrual cycle i get a lot of headaches um yeah i have alopecia due to that not severe alopecia it's like the back of my head like hair could just fall out at any time then it will grow back again but thank god like i still have my edges and all of that and with the weight it was really hard for me to gain weight some people have a hard time losing weight so that's also a symptom of, of pcos that your weight gain or your weight loss is just very very like it's just very tough people would judge you or judge ladies who have pcos who are a bit heavier and they'll be like oh, i just you know why don't you just go to the gym why just why won't you just do this do that that's one of the symptoms of that syndrome like 
you ha you can work out all you want, but you won't lose the weight or I can eat all the things I want. I'm not gaining the weight. So that is really hard. Um, but I think the biggest thing are the mood swings. Like when I'm on my cycle, I could, I could, let me not say kill because... I could literally strangle somebody a few days like I can literally just be in my bed and just crying because the pain is so severe I had to go to the hospital my pain level was on the same pain level of somebody that had a dilation of um, six centimeters so somebody that's like pushing it's like ready to push out a baby six centimeters that that was the level of my pain like that's that's insane that's not normal you know and a lot of people don't understand when I say like oh, I can go out when I'm on my cycle, look, like, oh, I'm also on my cycle. I'm not, it's not the same. Like, it's such a, a unspoken topic that people don't understand, like how draining and how mentally draining it can be. It really also, you know, ruins your confidence. You know, sometimes my skin just does not clear up. I can go to like clinics and you know do all these facials, but my hyperpigmentation would leave. It will come back. Uh, you know, my acne will come back. It will leave. It's just a lot. But I've, you know, find, found a way to accept it and just live with it because at the end of the day, it is prayer, you know. And I remember when I went to the gynecologist, the first thing that she said to me was like, oh, you're going to have issues with having kids. I said, God forbid. Back to sender. That's not my, that's not my testimony. You are absolutely mad. I said, girl, you might have said it to other women that accepted that. But as for me and my household, I'm, I'm, I'm bare children. I know my testimony will come that I've been healed from PCOS. You know, people say, oh, you can never be healed from it. You can only reduce the symptoms. You don't know my God. <laughs> you do not know Yahweh. I am believing God that I will be a testimony. I can testify one day and say that I've been completely healed from PCOS. Another fact, I am a worship dancer. I found out my gifts while I was in church, Fruto Center, you know, the place that we... Um, yeah, and the moment that gift got activated, whenever I listen to music, I can see myself dancing in my head. Um, or when I am sleeping and I'm dreaming and there's like music playing in my dream, I could see myself like dancing in my dream from the moment that that gift got activated. Not a fact, I'm almost done with my makeup. I am a very ambitious person, so I like to be around people who are also very ambitious. I don't like to be around people who are lazy. People will complain but do not solve their issues. Like, I'm a very problem solver but i need to be dramatic first like i said like all my friends are super ambitious like they're entrepreneurs content creators like just smart cookies you know and i can learn so much from them it doesn't matter if they're younger than me older like i can learn from all of them you know i just i just love being around people that motivate me that you know can really push me to be a better version of myself. I like to be around people who are smarter than me. And I can say that my friends are smarter than me. <laughs> they are smarter than me and I love it. Like I can learn so much from them. I was marinating my edges, I think. It is late now. My last, um, oh, oh, oh. Just need to fix this. But they got marinated. My last, um, fact i have misophonia i hate when i hear people eat why are you chewing so loudly why are you chewing why why are you chewing so loudly and the crazy thing sometimes i be chewing like that as well but i don't care why are you chewing loudly <laughs> and i have trypophobia i hate things like small holes and oh i just get chills i remember my mom had a carpet with like huh oh my May come here video. Oh, money if you make, honey. Money if you make. You ain't trying to get out the ears. Okay, we don't live in the ears, but <laughs> my mom used to have a carpet on the floor with like holes and stuff. And I said, hey, You need to switch the carpet. You need to switch the carpet. Like every single time I'll come home, I would like have, oh, uh, like I was about to say chicken skin. Hey, I would have like railing up. I don't know the English word, yeah, but it was just too much and I said, honey, so I bought a new carpet and she changed the carpet. Yeah, I'm that spoiled. Because my father is not your mate. I don't know which God you'll be serving, but my daddy in heaven. Sky daddy is so not your mate. Praise us. Oh, pray. Thailand.
baby. Oh, the honey cheese, the honey cheese, the honey cheese. Telling me, guys, she's buying me crisps in Thailand. <laughs> that is so sweet. She's buying me crisps from Thailand, guys. I've been accent switching, guys. Like I just love doing it. Oh, my makeup is really cute today. And I thought I was gonna. This is a semi-soft beat. I didn't do any any cream contour though. I need to do my lashes again. I'm so lucky that. Is that a fly? Audacity. One of my besties is a lash tech, and that's all. That's where I always do my lashes, and she's so good. If you have me on Instagram, if you see my Instagram, you see my lashes. Oh, so gorgeous. She is the best in the game. Argue with your mama. I put eyeshadow because I don't know how to do it. Or should I try it? I think I am. I'm gonna get my palette. Okay, I'm back with the palette. This is the palette. I'm gonna wear a pink blazer, so we're gonna go with. I think these focus on the palette camera oh this is a lot I'm not I don't know if I'm using the right brush hey my semi hey hey is it even an, an eyeshadow my semi oh it's not that bad it's not that bad it was just too light but anyways yeah the friends that I have solante solante you can count on them they motivate me I have two male friends and they are my jigger jiggers. One is hella young, like our age difference is huge. Shout out to Kwame Junior. <laughs> but somebody that is always there for me is Kwame Junior. He's like my son. When I went through something very traumatic, these were the people that I called in a group call um, on FaceTime, I believe. Yeah. And they just stood with me, they pray with me. Yeah, like I have a group of solid, solid friends and I love them to death. Yeah, what was I saying? This eyeshadow just, and this song, Nina, am I confused? Maybe I should call my friend and ask her if this eyeshadow is not given. Ali, kijk even. Okay. Mook the eyeshadow weghalen, because I was trying it, but I don't know if it's working out. Need locha. See you guys, she's laughing at me. <laughs> oh sorry. So when I get closer, it's ugly as hell. Okay, I'll try. No, no, I have a rose blazer. Hi guys. You say hi guys. Hey, thank you. Bye. We done. Very subtle. Very cute. I'm not a pro, we, we're gonna take it. But thank you guys so much for watching my Get Ready With Me facts about me. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.